Tom Clancy's The Division isn't scheduled for release till the 8th of March, but those who pre-ordered the game were given a preview of what was to come in the form of a closed beta over the weekend. Having recently featured The Division in my top 10 PC games coming out in 2016, it's obviously on my radar, so I took up Ubisoft's offer to preview the game. With limited time to test the open world third person shooter, I didn't get much sleep over the weekend. Still, being sleep deprived was well worth it, as the game's extremely exciting. The awesome gameplay did make the benchmarking portion a lot more painful than usual, and the whole time I just wanted to join in with everyone else in the Dark Zone. Since this is only a beta preview of the game, and with a few months of possible development to go, we won't be covering everything we would if the game had been officially released. So keeping that in mind, let's move on to check out how the quality presets compare before jumping into the benchmark results. For some reason, the low quality preset viewing angle is different to the other three presets, despite the character position and viewing angle going unchanged. Visually, the difference between Ultra and Medium, for example, is very limited, and we had a hard time telling the difference between the two throughout the game. The same is true for this next series of comparison shots. The Ultra Quality preset looks darker, and while it is slightly darker, the difference isn't as extreme as what you're witnessing here. This is because the game's day and night cycle makes it very difficult to compare footage from the same time of day. After changing each preset, the game needs to be rebooted, and in that time, the in-game time of day can change quite a bit. Still, overall, there doesn't appear to be a drastic difference between the Ultra and Medium quality settings. Moving on, let's take a look at the section of the game used for benchmarking. Accurately benchmarking the division is a little tricky due to the fact that you don't already load into the game in the exact same position, at least assuming you don't exit the game in the same area. To get around this, I started my benchmark pass at the helipad where you first dropped off, and after recording the frame rate, returned to the same spot before exiting the test. This was a lot like having to do the test twice every time, which was a bit of a bummer. The benchmark pass ran for 80 seconds, and the performance is very representative of what you'll find in other various districts throughout New York. You'll also encounter other online players in this section of the game, just as you will in the Dark Zone, though no combat can take place here. The pass also includes a varying range of indoor and outdoor environments, and we found the CPU usage was surprisingly high in this test when using the Core i7-6700K. Data scanned, downloading files. Got a bit Readings of a weird indicated. Using the ultra quality preset, we find that the division is extremely demanding at 1080p. The GTX 960, for example, averaged just 28 FPS, whereas the R9 380, on the other hand, was considerably faster with 39 FPS. AMD's Radeon GPUs performed exceptionally well in the beta version, especially considering AMD is yet to release an updated driver for the game. The only issue we noticed with the AMD cards is they did tend to dip down to lower frame rates than their equivalent NVIDIA counterparts. The R9 390X, for example, was 4% faster than the GTX 980 when comparing the average frame rate, but 21% slower when looking at the minimum frame rate. Oddly, these extreme minimums didn't impact the Fury X or Nano graphics cards. Jumping up to 1440p, wiped out the lower end cards, and here we see the GTX 960 and R9 380 both averaging less than 30 FPS. Even the GTX 970 and R9 390 struggled, and it took the 390X to reach a 40 FPS average. Given what we've seen so far, it wasn't expected that we'd find playable performance at 4K using a single GPU solution, and that's exactly what we found. The Fury X came out on top here with a 29 FPS average, while the GTX 980 Ti was good for just 26 FPS. Reducing the quality preset at 4K from ultra to high afforded the Fury X around 17% more performance, and the GTX 980 Ti 27% more performance. Still, with the average frame rate for these high-end GPUs just over 30 FPS, it looks like those hopeful for some 4K gaming in the division with a single GPU will need to lower the quality settings quite a bit. Before wrapping up the benchmarks, let's see how various quality presets impact performance on some mainstream GPUs in the GTX 960 and R9 380. As seen previously, the Ultra preset hammers these mainstream GPUs, and in the process pushes frame rates below desirable levels. Already we see a massive 34% performance increase from the R9 380 and 46% for the GTX 960, 
We're moving to the high quality preset. Going from high to medium allowed both graphics cards to increase the average frame rate by 30% or more. The GeForce GTX 960 saw a 100% performance improvement when going from the ultra preset to the medium preset, and honestly, the image quality difference isn't that significant. It certainly doesn't come anywhere near justifying the performance hit. Before I make any comments about the gameplay and performance in Tom Clancy's The Division, let's make it clear one more time, the game is still in the beta testing stage. As such, it could end up playing quite differently once officially released in March. Basically, Having said that, I think The Division looks York outstanding, despite maybe not quite living up to all the promotional right material we've seen over the past few no years. Nevertheless, That's for an open world game, the visuals are pretty amazing. I was particularly impressed with how awesome the snowstorms looked when they rolled in. The dynamic weather is a cool feature and I enjoyed how much it changed the combat. The night and day cycles, dynamic weather events and gorgeously detailed city all combined to make The Division a truly spectacular environment to play in. If there's just one complaint I have about the gameplay, it's that at times the big city setting feels too big due to a lack of enemies. At times a character would run for kilometres into unexplored territory only to find nothing worth throwing around at. So a lot of time is spent running around and not running into much, even in the dangerous dark zone. Worse still is when you do run into some ill-equipped looters and your stock standard arsenal of weapons makes extremely short work of them. This is all pretty easy to fix and perhaps it will be once the game is released. Performance wise, the game runs really well, though that of course depends on the quality settings used. Unfortunately, the short beta run didn't afford me enough time to tinker with all the settings, so I can really only comment on how the four standard presets impact performance. The game looks best on the ultra preset, which obviously isn't surprising. However, dropping down to the high preset has almost no impact on the visual quality, while it does have a hugely positive impact on frame rates. This is great news for gamers rocking a GTX 960 or R9 380, as it is possible to achieve playable performance using the high preset and extremely playable performance with the medium preset. Those wanting to play at 4K using a Fury X or GTX 980 Ti will have to settle for the medium quality preset. Once the game is released, we're keen to do some CPU testing, as the game appears particularly taxing here. As mentioned earlier, the 6700K was often loaded at around 50% or greater, not something we're used to seeing in games. I hope my beta performance review has given you some idea of what should be required to play Tom Clancy's The Division when it is released on March the 8th. Remember that these figures could change quite a bit with the final product and new drivers. This has been Matt for Hardware Unbox. For more videos like this, remember to hit like, hit subscribe and check out our forum at hardwareunbox.com. See you next time. Yeah.